and we're back so just a quick heads up for what i'm doing for my standard preventative maintenance right here in the spring of 2024 i'm going to be changing the air filter going to be changing the oil and the oil filter the fuel filter and the spark plugs we're also going to put some seafoam and tecron in the fuel because i've gotten a little bit of backfire on this unless i run it at low revs right when i'm done cutting the grass so with that said, let's see what we're going to be using. All right, just showing everything I'm going to be using here. And once again, all of the parts, just like all my videos, it's in the description below. So we have new spark plugs. I'll check the gap on the existing ones before I pop these in. A little bit of Tecron, Mystery Marvel Oil, Seafoam, brand new oil filter, air filter, fuel filter. Pretty simple. Let's hop to it. For the air filter right here, that's about as easy as it gets. You have one tab here, pull over, one tab here, pull over. Come out, old one out, new one in. Wow, that's dirty. On your new one right here, pre-filter should be inside. Grab this, stretch that little foam around. Come on, come on, there we go. Stretch that around, all around the little filter media. Sure you're over that lip everywhere. And I'm looking pretty good. And now pop it on. Cover. Done. I'm not sure who the genius is that said we'll put the oil filter right here. And you got basically no space underneath. Right here, I mean, I can just barely get my fingers under there. So, I got a theory. I've got my front tires propped up with two by sixes, two of them a piece. And I've got aluminum foil. And let's see if I could just make a little trough right down here into my oil catch can. Alrighty, loom foil in, catch can underneath. Let's see if I can get that off by hand. Ugh. This is really not by much. Oil filter wrench. This one's kind of white trash, but it doesn't matter if it gets the job done. See, I don't have any drops yet. Oh, there we go. Well, good news is I don't have any oil on my frame. Yeah, bad news is it, oh, is it finally coming out? There we go. And I'll pop this too, so we have air going through. You know, when you take one of these filters off, don't try and overcomplicate it. Don't grab just one, but two grocery bags, okay? Don't forget, your filter has about half full of oil too. Here's your part number. If you're just watching this and you haven't checked the description below. It's been three or four minutes and I'm just about at the end of my dripping here, I'm thinking. So I'm just gonna tip my aluminum foil and get the rest of the oil into my catch can. You can get these from any Lowe's, Home Depot, Tractor Supply, even Kohler if you really want to. Once again, in the description below. I think everyone should know this, but I'm saying it anyway. Make sure you get some brand new clean oil and oil up this gasket right here, this rubber gasket, so it makes a good seal against the machine surface of the engine. Once again, virgin oil right here on that gasket. You know, my dad and I have been kind of at each other's throats about the past 10 years about this. So I'm just gonna say my opinion for an oil filter. You get it as tight as you can by hand putting it on, okay? Now if you can get it as tight as you can by hand, I don't know, maybe 25 foot pounds, there's no way it's coming off. You do not tighten this with a wrench. Because if you tighten this with a 
with a 3 8 drive or a half inch drive, you're never getting that off. You're gonna have to put a screwdriver through it and then you're gonna just destroy the whole thing. And it's gonna be all marred up here on the frame or whatever piece of equipment you're working on. Just don't tighten these with a wrench. That's just my opinion. I just changed the oil in my car today. Just get this hand tight. During the engine oil, there's this little hose that goes right to the bottom of the crankcase. There's a little hole right here. Just put it through that little hole, and all you have to do is pop this little plug right here. Mm. Really hard to get that off. Really hard. There we go. Alrighty. Nope, can't get it by hand yet. Okay, go ahead and move that out. Plug's about to go. Shit, there we go. Now I know I'm going to get a lot of mixed responses on this, and everyone's going to say you should use the blue thread locker. Put on this little plug. I'm gonna use the red right here. And reason being, you really don't want this to come out and, I mean, I don't know what that is. It's like some super strong tacky material, kind of like a plumber's tape that's on here from the factory, but obviously you really don't want this to come out. I'm gonna use the red, just dab it a few times. Not sure about you guys, but I prefer the gel thread locker right here to the liquidy ones. Reason being, Whenever you use the gel, it's kind of like a little bit of a paste and it doesn't just drip out everywhere. These leak everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean everywhere. So I'll use these until I'm out of them, but I'm going for the gel. And these are a lot easier too, because look, these are already pierced right there. See that popping up that little bit? Yep, they, are, they come pierced from the factory. So that makes your life a bit easier. Pop a little bit of red onto this one. I know I'm going to get some flack by using the red rather than the blue, but I'd rather something for sure not come out than maybe not come out. You can see it's kind of like kind of like a jello consistency, I probably put it. A lot easier to spread with this 45 degree too. I know this is probably way too much. I'll wipe it off with the paper towel here in a bit. All right, let's get rid of that excess right here. There we go, let's just get a good amount to that thread. There we go, I think that's good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Everyone has their own opinion on how long to wait when you're draining oil from cars, equipment, lawnmowers, whatever it is. My opinion is to wait until it starts dripping. You'll see it to drip right here in a second. Right there, you'll see it right there. It's about to go, there it goes. Now, this in, to me ensures you get the maximum amount of the crankcase and you just have cleaner oil throughout your engine for whatever equipment you're working on. That's just my opinion. And in about 19 years of doing this, it's never served me wrong. So take it or leave it, but that's just what I do. I always clean out the threads on something like this too. Pop you in right there. There we go. Now we got some resistance. All right. Maybe a little bit tighter. <clears throat> okay. My opinion, when you put drain bolts on, whether it's a hose, whether it's straight out of the oil pan, whatever it is, get it as tight as you can by hand, but never, ever, ever use a power tool or a large wrench to get something on because it's gonna be that much harder to get it off. I'm not exactly sure how much this engine takes. It is the KT715 right there on the Kohler 7000 series. I think this takes 2.2 quarts with the filter. I'm using two sealed quarts of Castrol Edge 
just 10W30. It doesn't matter what brand as long as it's virgin oil. That's my opinion. All right, let's start it up and then we'll check the level. that's coming across on camera that is right at the full mark two quarts right at the full mark right there is about 12 ounces put about two ounces in it Twelves here, eights here, that's about ten on the dot. <clears throat> Jeez, that was tough to get off. Jiminy Christmas, I had to wiggle that the whole time. That was really, really hard to get out. Man, just to show you, it's the old one right there. This is the new one. So, I'll check the gap on these. They look, this new one looks a hair thicker, if you ask me, on the gap. It's supposed to be 30 thousandths of an inch. All right, so the old one was at about 27 thousandths, and I was getting some backfire on this. Maybe that was why. The new one is right at 30 thousandths. I've got this copper anti-seize here. When you're working on spark plugs or you're going into an aluminum block, you have to use copper-based anti-seize, not the aluminum anti-seize that I used on the Cub Cadet when I put the new PTO on. You don't need a lot. A little goes a long way right here on these machine threads. That is, that's, that's more than enough right there. That's, that's, that's way too much, but that's what's on there, so I'll just go with it. I'll wipe a little bit of this off with the paper towel, then I'll screw it back in. So, I wiped a good amount off with the paper towel. You can see right inside those threads, there's a good amount still in there. This is just anti-C, so it's a lot easier to get the plug out the next time if you're doing this every year like I am. Spark plug socket is standard 5.8. A gentle snug is good enough. Do not over torque. Push till you feel that good seat. Rinse and repeat the other side. Spark plugs, done. So it's really tough to film this angle, but replacing this fuel filter here, and here's the brand new one. You can see I wrote the arrows on there just a few times to remind myself which way the flow was. So pop off both of those clamps, put these barbs in the fuel line, clamps back on, done. Jiminy Christmas, that was tough. Let's wiggle off this other end right here. <sighs> Don't let it all leak out, obviously. This is going to have to reprime once we start it back up, but don't worry. It can sit there for a minute. Let's get our new filter. Alrighty, new filter. Remember which way the flow goes. Let's get these little barbs in. One. Remember, won't be super easy. Just keep going. <clears throat> all right, look at that. See, we're all the way seated. 
bag of pliers, your fuel line clamp, bump it all the way up, right in between those barbs. Booyah! Let's get the other one. Here's our other one. Watch for the little cord here. Let's get this fuel line on. Same thing. Just push and wiggle all the way. Push and wiggle. Push, wiggle, and spin. Alrighty. It's about as good as we can get it. Right there in the middle. Okie dokie. Right there. All right, fuel filter, done. Last two things I wanna do. Fill, fill the rest of this Tecron. There's about four ounces in here if I had to guess. Add a healthy dose of seafoam. Healthy dose, I'd say in between six to eight ounces. Seafoam is really, really good stuff. I've seen it do some amazing things. There are a few products that I can really swear by and say that I'll never buy anything else. This is one of them. Top it off with a healthy dose of fresh gas. We're all done. We're all done guys. Now, quick review are my thoughts. What do I really think about this? I mean, it is $3,000 or $3,100 at Lowe's. You get what you pay for. I got two big complaints on this mower. Number one, you look right here. There's no hour meter. Throttle, start, blades, that's it. So, it's just bare necessities. Cup holder, little pocket. Blade height, gas, storage cubby. And this little tow hook goes on the back. Second main complaint, it doesn't have lights, which isn't the biggest deal if you live, you know, in suburbia and you're not doing any real work. But yeah, it's it works. It's a good base model. If it were up to me, I would buy the Arians or the Cub Cadet or perhaps John Deere equivalent. I wouldn't buy one of these for the pure reason that it doesn't have an hour meter. If you are really up to date on your maintenance like I am, it's not the biggest deal. Hour meter, it really matters if you're a commercial guy and you know you got 20 or 12 different accounts and hey, you're out here every week. That's something I would do. That's just me. But thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Just like all the rest of my videos, parts and tools are in the description below. Thanks for sticking around. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video, helps out the channel. And remember, be super today.